Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. Uh, in this video, I would like to talk about a sorting technique called as selection sort. Uh, selection sort is also called as in place comparison sort. Selection sort is known for its simplicity. This sorting algorithm should be actually employed only when the number of elements to be sorted are minimal. Uh, for large values, uh, a large data set, it has been found that it takes quite a lot of time. So it um, uh, affects the performance of your algorithm. So this in this video, we will uh, look more about selection sort algorithm. So the item of discussion is uh, selection sort introduction that we just saw. Then next we will look at selection sort example. Then we will look at uh, selection sort algorithm. Uh, then uh, we will understand the algorithm with the example and then finally uh, we will analyze the time complexity of selection sort. <clears throat> uh, now uh, let's look an, at an example for selection sort by using the following numbers. Um, I have a set of numbers uh, here uh, that are getting displayed. Now. Uh, if I were to summarize selection sort, uh, in the selection sort algorithm, we do the following. First, we find out the minimal uh, element in the list, that is the minimum value in the list. And then swap this minimum value with the first element. Then we repeat this procedure for the rest of the elements. So let's see how it goes ahead uh, as we look at these numbers. So first, we take the first and second element 89 and 45. Uh, the minimum element is 45 then we take the minimum element and the next element that is 68 and in both these cases 45 happens to be the minimal of the two then we take the minimal element and the next element which is 90 and 45 is still the minimal element then we compare 45 with the next element that is 29 now 29 happens to be the minimal element then we compare 29 with the next element that is 34 and 29 is still the minimal element. Then we compare 29 with the last element that is 17 and we figure out that 17 is the minimal element. So in the first iteration, we have figured out 17 is the minimal element. So we will replace 17 with the first element that is 89. So 89 goes to the right, 79 goes to the left and we have sorted one element from the list. So uh, next we start with the leftover elements. So we will compare uh, the uh, second element that is 45 with 68 and 45 happens to be the minimal element. Then we compare 45 with the next element that is 90 and 45 is still the minimal element. Then 45 is compared with the next element that is 29 and 29 happens to be uh, lesser of the two. Then 29 is compared with 34 and 29 is the smaller one and 29 is compared with 89 and 29 happens to be the smaller of the two. So uh, 29 has been found as the smallest element in the leftover uh, elements. So we'll replace 29 with the second element. So 45 goes to the right and 29 goes to the left. So we have sorted two elements after the second iteration. So uh, in the third iteration, again, we compare 68 with 90 and 68 is the smaller of the two. 68 with 45, 45 is the smaller one, 45 with 34 and 34 happens to be smaller and 34 and 89, 34 happens to be the smaller one. So by the uh, end of third iteration, uh, we have figured out 34 is the smaller one, smallest one. So we'll replace the first element with uh, 34. In this case, the first element is actually the third element in the list. So 34 is in its place. So we have sorted three elements. So this would continue with the other elements. So 45 is the smaller one and 45, 68, 45 still happens to be the smaller one, 45, 89, 45 is still the smaller one. So we will compare, uh, we'll uh, re uh, exchange 45 and 90 and 45 happens to be in its place now. So after four iterations, four values have been sorted. And in the fifth iteration, 90 and 68 are compared and 68 is the smaller of the two. Next 68 we compare with 89 and 68 happens to be the smaller one. So in the whole unsorted list 68 is the smaller one. So we will replace or exchange 68 and 90. So 68 is in its place. 
and in the last iteration the leftover elements are compared and then we place them in their proper places so 89 goes to your left 90 goes to the right and we move to the sorted list so we have all the elements that are sorted so this is a basic idea of how selection sort um, actually works now uh, this is the algorithm for selection sort um, so this is how the selection sort uh, algorithm looks like this is a c code so uh, you will see that uh, selection sort takes an array uh, which is the array of elements that needs to be sorted and n is the um, uh, number of elements in the array so we will see that in this algorithm there are um, two for loops the outer for loop is for the number of iterations that we saw and uh, uh, in the inner for loop is to compare the elements during a particular iteration and this uh, loop uh, at the end of this loop we would have figured out the smallest element in the list and then min will store the index into the smallest element and then finally when we come out of the inner for loop we would know the position of the minimal element so we will replace the first element with the minimal element and then when i increases to 2 we replace the second element with the minimal element as and when then i when i became becomes 3 then we replace uh, the third element with the minimal element and so on next we look at uh, uh, the same code uh, along with an example so uh, let's take a scenario where i becomes 0 so j will go from i plus 1 that is 1 to uh, n minus 1 that is 7 minus 1 6 so uh, uh, and then initially we will set minimum value as the 0th element that is i and then we compare j goes from 1 to 7 so first element will be compared with 0th element which is by default treated as minimal element and if it is smaller then the second element becomes the minimum element and j goes to uh, 2 so we will compare minimum uh, minimum element with the third element and so on so uh, we'll just look at uh, uh, these numbers uh, so we have 89 45 68 90 29 34 and 17 so when i is equal to 0 the minimal element is first we set it as 89 then j is equal to 1 so array of j is 45 so we will compare 89 and 45 and then minimum is set as uh, 45 then j becomes 2 so we will uh, compare uh, 45 with 68 and we figure out 45 is a minimal value so we will set minimum as uh, minimum would still be uh, uh, 1 and then we compare when j becomes 3 we compare 45 and 90 and we still figure out that uh, this condition does not hold good so 45 still is the mm, uh, minimal element then we compare uh, 45 with 29 so array of j will be uh, 4 so uh, a array of 4 which is 29 is less than uh, array of minimum that is 45 so minimum value will be set as 4 then um, uh, j becomes 5 so we compare uh, 29 and 34 and since array of 5 which happens to be 34 is greater than this we will not set this value and then j becomes 6 we compare uh, array of 6 which is 17 with array of min that is 29 and since array of 6 which happens to be 17 is less than 29 min will be set as 6 so after this inner for loop of j uh, gets over minimum value will be equal to 6 which is an index of this number 17 so finally when the inner for loop is done we will just swap a of i which is 89 with a of min which is 17 so 89 goes to the right and 17 goes to the left so the inner for loop is to go through all the list of elements and figure out the index of the minimal element and once you come out of the inner for loop you actually exchange the ith value with the min value so then when i becomes one when i becomes one 
j starts from uh, i becomes 1 so i a, a of array of min will be i so array of min will point to this element and j starts from 2 so j would be pointing to 68 so we will compare 45 and 68 and 45 is still the smallest element and then we compare 45 and 90 and 45 is still the smallest element we would compare 45 with uh, uh, 29 uh, and 29 is the smallest element so min will be set to the index of 29 and then 29 and 34 are compared so 29 is still the smallest element 29 and 89 are compared and 29 is still the smallest element so index of by the end of this iteration min will be pointing to index of 29 so when the inner for loop is done we come out and we will swap a of i which happens to be 45 and a of min which happens to be 29 so we will we will uh, exchange the values of 29 and 45 and 25, 29 has been sorted and it's put in its place then again when i becomes 2 we repeat the whole process again so 68 is the smallest of these two and then 45 happens to be the smallest of these two and 34 happens to be the smallest of these two and 34 still happens to be the smallest of these two and then finally we will swap uh, the first element here with 34 and so 34 goes in its place so 34 is sorted so this is how the algorithm works and we uh, this will continue till uh, j reaches to uh, 6 and then we would actually uh, uh, by the end of this process we would have sorted all the elements in the increasing order now uh, let's look at the time complexity analysis for selection sort algorithm uh, now the basic operation in this case is if array of j is less than array of min and time complexity is generally the number of times the basic operation is executed so the number of times we execute if array of j is less than array of min will determine the time complexity of this algorithm now um, we know that there are two for loops and the inner for loop goes from i plus 1 to n minus 1 and the outer for loop goes from 0 to n minus 2 so this basic operation that gets executed it gets executed each time for the for loop inner for loop going from i plus 1 to n minus 1 and this whole process happens for i is equal to 0 to n minus 2 so we can represent the number of times basic operation uh, getting executed in the form of summation of i is equal to 0 to n minus 2 uh, j going from uh, i plus 1 to n minus 1 of one basic operation now uh, we know for a fact that a summation uh, going j going from 0 to n of 1 is actually upper bound minus lower bound plus 1 uh, if, uh, in this case it would be uh, upper bound would be n and lower bound would be 0 plus 1 for example suppose the summation is j going from 0 to 5 of 1 then we can write this as upper bound 5 minus lower bound 0 plus 1 which is nothing but 6 and if we actually uh, manually count it so uh, the number of times 1 gets added from 0 to 5 will be actually 6 times so uh, this answer uh, will match the way we have calculated here so now if we apply this uh, learning uh, here on the inner uh, summation we can actually write the inner summation as upper bound which is nothing but n minus 1 minus the lower bound which is nothing but i plus 1 plus 1 so now if i were to solve this uh, n would remain as it is here and minus 1 and minus 1 will become minus 2 plus 1 so effectively it becomes minus 1 and minus i remains as it is so the inner summation has been solved and uh, simplified to n minus 1 minus i now uh, in order to solve this uh, outer summation we actually start substituting the value for i is equal to 0 1 2 up to n minus 2 so when we do that we actually get the following values so when i substitute i equal to 0 here i get n minus 1 minus 0 then when I substitute i equal to 1 here, I get n minus 1 minus 1 plus and so on till I substitute the last element that is n minus 1 minus of n minus 2. So when I do this, 
and when I simplify this, I actually uh, end up having an equation like this, which is nothing but n minus 1 plus n minus of 2 plus and so on till 2 plus this n and n gets cancelled minus 1 and this becomes plus 2 which is nothing but plus 1. Now, we also know uh, that if I have an equation like 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n elements, we can write it as n into n plus 1 by 2. Now, uh, if you compare what we have here uh, and what the equation we know, the only difference between these two equations is on the left hand side of this equation, we have added an extra n, whereas here we do not have that extra n. So what we can do is we can subtract n from both sides of this equation. So when we do that, we actually have an equation like 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 plus n and minus n and then we also subtract a minus n here. So if we solve the right hand side, we will actually get it as n square minus n by 2. Now if I substitute this value uh, for, the, for the equation that I have, I actually get c of n equal to n square minus n by 2. Now the highest power in this uh, equation is actually n square. So the complexity of the algorithm is actually theta of n square. Again, uh, as I said, the selection algo sort algorithm, since the complexities of the order of n square, it works well only when the number of elements are less. So if you have more number of ele uh, elements to be sorted, then the complexity of the algorithm becomes higher. So this was the selection sort algorithm. Thanks for watching.